<laughs> Despite what it looks like, this is not a magnet. Actually, it's something much more exotic. And the invisible field it emits is easily seen using this 5x5 detector array. But what exactly is the grid detecting? This video is sponsored by Factor Meals. Thank God, because I can't cook. Magnets are underrated. Using an invisible Jedi magnetic force, these little objects attract ferrous material and their attraction is permanent. It's honestly remarkable, but is there an equivalent for static electricity? You know, an object with a permanent static charge. Instead of attracting only ferrous materials, an object which can attract everything else. After spending the past month digging into studies, poring over manufacturing techniques, and formulating my own recipes, there is such a thing. Let's get right to it. There are so many hidden gems of high voltage physics I've had my eyes open to in recent years. Things from levitation, ionic thrust, nebulography, nuclear fusion, to name a few. But electrets, they're in a class all of their own. Electrets are materials which can retain a semi-permanent electric charge, much like how magnets hold a magnetic field. Whereas a magnet has a north and south pole, these have a negative and positive side, meaning they produce permanent static electric fields. And we're all familiar with what a static electric field feels like. Electrets are really cool and have commercial uses I'll talk about later, but when it comes to the larger sizes, well, those are all experimental and you can't really buy them. And I wanted to make a big one. I got to work researching how exactly they're made, and fundamentally, it's pretty easy. An insulating material is melted, then placed between two electrodes charged to several thousand volts DC. Power is applied the entire time it cools and hardens, leading to a reorganization of charges within the material. That reorganizing comes in a few forms, the most common being molecules lined up in chains of positive to negative, leading to an overall mass of charged material with a positive and negative plate. That's very similar to how magnetizing an object works. As for what insulating material to use, it didn't take long to find the original recipe. Electrets were first made in the 1800s, and Oliver Heaviside originally coined the term electret, but it wasn't until Motojiro Asano, a Japanese physicist, came up with the first repeatable formulation for electrets in 1925, using carnauba wax, rosin, and beeswax. Those materials are easily available today, and I've got the high voltage, so how hard could it be? After a quick search, I found all the materials at local craft stores, and considering they'd be melted, they'd need an appropriate mold. A cylinder shape seemed easiest, and it was a quick print with my Prusa. Once printed, I covered the top and bottom of the assembly with aluminum foil tape, effectively creating two plates to be electrified. For high voltage, I employed the custom flyback from my last video, which at full power produces upwards of 65 kilovolts. I dialed it back a bit and connected it to a voltage multiplier. This setup provided a clean 40,000 volts DC at low current, perfect for forming a large electret. Sick! I should have everything I need to make an electret. I've got the materials, the mold, and the super high voltage power source. This should be pretty straightforward, so I'm just going to get straight to melting the materials. So you can hear the really strong static hiss. That indicates a really strong static electric field. Just, just barely too strong for the setup. <laughs> but that's really good. It means this electret's probably gonna turn out well. This Corona is really beautiful, but it indicates the mold really couldn't handle the voltages applied. While the wax was cooling under the influence of high voltage, I went on to tackle the next obstacle, which, was how am I going to test if the wax has become an electret? And if so, how strong is the electric field? Well, I would need a static field detector, which those only take a couple of minutes to build. Quick and dirty, here's the static detector I'll be using for all of my tests. You can see the uh, LED on top is unlit. It only lights up in proximity to a positive static electric field. This is super sensitive, like it's annoyingly sensitive. So let's see what it can do. This is what I mean by sensitive. Here, I pulled out my Van de Graaff and placed it over two meters away. So the generator is running, and I'm going to take my finger off so it builds up a charge. Boom! It took one second. Ooh! 
Okay, oh look at that. So, as I point my finger at the generator, it loses charge. Whoop! And the detector indicates how far out the static field is going. That's so crazy. Now, why would pointing at the Van de Graaff turn off the detector? The answer is as beautiful as it is simple. If you think you know, leave your answer in the comments down below. So after an hour or so, the wax had cooled and I was thrilled to test out my new static object. Okay, so here's the electret. If I made this correctly, there should be a permanent static field. Let's see what it does. Uh, nothing yet. Nothing? Nothing? What? It was at this moment that I realized that this would be a journey. <laughs> so a bit of reading later, and I was encouraged to try again, but this time with the conductive plates facing inward, in contact with the molten wax. A quick redesign and print, and I felt really confident that this would do the trick. Whereas the last ones had foil on the outside, these, well, these have foil on the inside. Another dose of measuring, melting, stirring, and pouring, and it was time for round two. Quick note, don't bend down and stare into a wax mold. I legit splashed wax on my face doing this. Round two. Oh, hello there. Okay, so we've got like a very, very weak static electric field. Um, oh God, it's so weak. So plates in contact with the molten material helped, and technically, I created an electret. Granted, the weakest electret in the Milky Way, but I think I know why that is. Just like the first mold, the second had issues with arcing and coronal discharge, meaning a strong electric field was never really able to build up on the top and bottom. Meaning the molten wax didn't experience a strong enough electric field while cooling. Hmm. So back to the drawing board and another redesign. This mold employed foil edges tapering outward and greater spacing between plates. It also would be closed the entire time and wax poured in the top to ensure both plates are in full contact with the wax. So I've given it about an hour and the wax has completely cooled and hardened in the presence of a static electric field, a really strong one. I've had about uh, 10 kilovolts applied the entire time. So the next step is I remove the power and instantly short out both sides of the electret. I then wrapped it up in aluminum foil to preserve all charges and let it sit for a day because I was hungry and I heard a knock at the door. So I'm a really active person. I run in the mornings, I lift weights at night. I don't always have time to formulate like a really fancy meal. So when Factor Foods reached out a while ago asking to sponsor one of my videos, I thought I'm saved. The food is delivered right to your door and comes packed fully chilled. You can choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, most popular being calorie smart, keto, protein plus, or vegan and veggie. In my first delivery, they also provided this apple kale wheatgrass juice, which I would be lying if I didn't say I loved it. Ready to eat in just two minutes, each meal is chef crafted and dietitian approved, and they also have over 60 add-ons for you to discover, like breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good pretty much all day long. For dinner, I busted out the cavatappi and shrimp scampi because I love seafood. You can see it comes fully prepared and it can be heated in the oven or microwave, nuking it for about two minutes on high heat and then giving it a stir plus a little splash of some old grape juice and my dinner was completely ready. The meals are a perfect blend of fitness and flavor which is why I've always loved them. It's actually really good and I'm naturally skeptical of prepared foods, just, just how I am, but I'm happy with Factor. They knock it out of the park and I'm saving a bunch of time. If this sounds like it's for you, go to factor75.com and use the code 50plasma for 50% 50 off your first box plus free shipping. Again, that's factor75.com, code 50plasma for 50% 50 off and free shipping your first box. So the next day I unwrapped the electret and could already tell things were a bit different this time. So I'm in the process of cleaning this off and I've noticed that as I try to pick off the wax, it's actually kind of sticking to the form, like statically sticking. So that makes me really excited. Demolding it took a bit of work, but this was a good sign. It indicated the wax made full contact with the plates during cooling. All right, 
There's one side of it. Attempt number three. Ooh, you see that? <laughs> That's like nine, 10 inches away. Oh my God. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. Okay, so as I rotate the positive pole, whoosh, brighter, brighter, brighter. <laughs> oh, this is so much more potent than the second version. I mean, second version was a quarter inch, and I mean, this is like nine to 10 inches away. Definitely a step in the right direction. Preventing energy loss between the plates, you know, sparking, coronal discharge, made a massive difference and that makes perfect sense. Literally a third time's the charm. This is an actual electric material and I didn't even use the best materials. I just used the traditional method. Better materials. Mm. There's two main variables which influence strength of an electret. Strength of electric field during cooling and material choice. The more electrically resistive a material is and prone to polarization during molten state, the better that material is for electrets. Here's our wax mixture, and here's polyethylene, which I happen to have in stock. This meant round four and a freshly printed mold, this time with an upgrade. One final try, and I'm feeling great about this design. You'll notice the orange ring, that is a thick insulator between the top and bottom plates. That helps prevent sparking between the plates and also coronal discharge from forming, which leaks energy out of the system and reduces the final strength of the electret. So, let's give it a try. And this time I'm trying some polyethylene. This was pretty interesting. When molten, the polyethylene turned crystal clear and had the consistency of cold honey. Not quite pourable, but liquid enough. It's holding up okay, but the uh, separator, the insulator, melted off, so. It's about to melt into a puddle. A few hours later, I was greeted with a really beautiful sight, a perfect little hockey puck of electrical doom. It formed perfectly, and I could feel the hair on the back of my hand standing up as I held it. Got a tiny piece of foil stuck in the bottom, which I'd need to dig out, but otherwise perfect. Feeling good about this. <laughs> Woo! That's a foot and a half. So this is pushing about two feet away. Um, that's so interesting. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with these results. I'm gonna wager this is strong enough to pick something up. Oh yeah. There we go, that's a permanent static charge. Massive success. I mean, let's review all the attempts. In terms of detector light-up distance, first iteration, no effect. Second, quarter inch. Third, nine to 10 inches, and the fourth and final version, upwards of two feet. If that's not proof that you should never give up, I don't know what is. Clearly polyethylene plastic is superior for electric use and holding a strong static electric field. But what does that electric field look like? <sighs> I'm gonna need more than one detector. My plan was to do a five by five array of identical static sensors. Using Onshape, it was easy to model up a support structure, and I'll leave a link down below for you to try out Onshape for free yourself. What follows is the living embodiment of the word monotonous. Hacksmith's newest power armor video came out right when I was in the middle of losing my mind. Good save, James. Now in theory, if I wired this up correctly, which I really hope I did, um, all I have to do is push this button right there, and then all 25 sensors will be activated together, and in theory, only light up when in the presence of a positive static electric field. Ah, damn it, those aren't supposed to be on, unless it's like in the 
presence of a static field. Ooh. Ooh, what is this? Perhaps I've got a little bit of a static charge on me, or maybe this table? Okay, so... Hmm... After fixing a few tweaks and some bad solder joints, check this out. God damn, that's cool. <laughs> the array is slightly less sensitive when laying flat, but that all changes when it's set to be normal on and the electrode's negative pole is facing the detector instead. In this shot, you can clearly see the shape of the electric field and the relative strength at distance. It's incredible to see. The detector's a bit finicky, but I mean, hell does it work. I mean, it gives an image of a static field. Granted, a really low resolution image of a static field, but it's still an image. Oh, maybe I should do a second version, like a 10 by 10. That's, that's four times as many sensors as this, uh, where I'd completely lose my mind. That'd be like 400, 450 solder points. Okay, besides being an exotic mystery, what electrets are used for is actually pretty interesting. Since an electret has a permanent charge, they have two really common uses, microphones and motion sensors. Microphones utilizing electrets can be made smaller and lighter in addition to being more sensitive to higher frequencies. Motion sensors, because if you have a detector on one side and the electret on another, any object which moves between the two will affect that static field and be picked up by the detector. It's really interesting stuff. I learned a lot creating both of these, especially the detector, and hopefully you walked away learning something new yourself. Don't forget to leave your thoughts down below and subscribe for all future videos. Thank you to Factor for making sure I don't starve, to my Patreons, and also to you for watching. You stay classy.